I'm here to do some ska punk jokes with Dave McWayne from Big D and the Kids Table on the Dad Joke Game Show. What's up, Dave? Not much. Not much, Dennis. How you doing? Um, if I make you laugh three times, I think you have some kind of surprise for us at the end. Is that right? Y yes. And then you're going to tell us about your new record and all kinds of cool stuff. You have several new records to discuss, so we'll get right into it. Joke number one. Oi, ska punk jokes. I bought Baby Ball a book that shows you how to play famous punk rock and metal songs. You did? It has hard covers. <laughs> ah, oh. I, got, I got you, boom. All right. That's a good one. You have to yeah. admit it. Well, uh, as a metal fan, it was a good joke. <laughs> it has hard covers. Okay, so I got I to gotta be more... I got I to gotta, okay, yeah, hold it. Hold I got to think more like, you know, do you deserve it? Yeah, yeah okay. You know, I'm in a ska band too, J Dave, joke number two. Mm -hmm. And um, we do game night every week. You know what we play? What do you play? Checkers. Checkers. Get it? <laughs> I said, like the checkers. They got the ties and shoes and stuff with checkers on them. No? All right, you're doing good. You're doing well, good. I mean, what, what is it? Because it's like. Uh, what? I... Did you think it's funny? <laughs> I I didn't think it was funny, but I could hold my hold my mouth closed. So you know, is it is it okay? Is it, well, is no, it laughter or is it smir does smirks count? No, smirks don't count. I have to make you break out into laughter. Okay, okay. I like that yeah. one. I probably know a lot of ska jokes, so you know, you probably just put me. Tell me. Oh, please. Can you give me one? Oh, I should rephrase that. I probably heard a lot of ska jokes. Oh, not, okay. Not know them, so maybe I was able to get through that because I was, you know. Do you know, where did the punk put on his deodorant? Where? In the pit. In the, <laughs> in the pit. In his pit? I like it. Like the mosh pit, but also his armpit. I like it. Kind of a thing. No? Yes? I bet I'm more susceptible to non-music jokes. I'm going to put that as a no laugh. Yeah, I think I, I appreciate it. What did the punk rocker bring to Thanksgiving, David? All right, All right I'm going to try to... Try to I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to like be. I want to. I want to. I want to be. Uh, I want to be the. What is that woman called? Gwyneth Paltrow. I want to cleanse Gwyneth, like the be as cleansed as Gwyneth Paltrow and just okay. take it naturally. Not try to fight it. Not try okay. to, to go with the current. Okay, so I'm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If you feel the joke, allow it to take control of you. Why fight it? Those were two funny jokes, but I was, you know, okay. I was trying to. Okay, let's do it. All right. The, now picture the scene. The punk rock is going to um, Thanksgiving. All right. He's gonna see his grandma. He combs his mohawk. I've done. I've done that. And what did he bring for his side? What do you think he brought to Thanksgiving? I think he. I don't know. Moshed potatoes. I was gonna say that. <laughs> I was trying to go. I was well, that's to, a laugh. That's, right. that's a laugh. I was like mash. I was like <laughs> mash. Mash potato. Mash. It's something with mash. Mashed yeah. potatoes. Yeah, that's good. Potatoes. Dennis Ball, may I ask you a quick question? Please do, David. How do you? How are you so good with humor? Oh man, I'm not. I'm. I try, man. I try. Do, does it how run? How so? Does it run in the family? Yeah. Well, I'm, I try to be a well-rounded individual. That helps. <laughs> just, you know? Yes. Just kind of keep a little bounce in your step and, you know. I like it. All right. What's the third bounce one? Bounce back. All right. I'm third. Okay. No, it's cool. Where did the ska band get their hamburgers? Where did the ska band get their hamburgers? At the, at the pick it up, pick it up window. Oh, that's a good one. That's actually great. I did not think of that, but I was going to say checkers. Oh, the again, place. the answer again is checkers. <laughs> checkers. Did you write that joke? Yes. Whoa, writing jokes. That's so amazing. I actually wrote all of the jokes today. Oh, it or not. that's really good. I... Thanks, I've tried. You know, they're not all great, but a couple of them are okay. I can't even imagine writing a joke. Yeah. This is the next one I'm proud of. Joke all right. number six. Okay. How did the punk rocker calm down the swarm of angry bats? How did the punk rocker calm down the swarm <laughs> of angry bats? <laughs> by, by, uh, <laughs> by a 
mosh pit tornado. I don't know how. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm done with the mosh pit jokes. So. Uh, uh, he, put on, he put on his combat boots. That's pretty good. He put on his combat boots. <laughs> that's pretty good. Boom! Gotcha, that's three. That's good. That's good, right? Yeah. Combat I... boots. <laughs> Well, it adds a good visual. I can see him <laughs> stomping now. Right, and he's and every calm, every stomp of his calm bat boots makes the bats more and more calm. Right, right. Ah, uh, the feng shui. The feng. But then my question, uh, you know, I I think somebody out there, a Dennis the Ball fan, should illustrate what a calm bat boot looks like. Yeah, what does a calm bat? What do calm bat boots look like? Somebody draw that. Yeah, is it just? I mean. Is it just the fluffiest boots you ever saw, or or know, or do they shoot? You know, do they shoot feng shui out? I, I they talk. might, and they might just look cool to bats, and they're like, oh, nice. And oh, right, it might be a distracted might by it. Be batty, yeah. Bat, yeah. All right. Um, speaking of bats, joke number seven. Nice. How many goths does it take to change a light bulb? Um, oh, uh, two, one to do it and one to cry about it? Nope, that's emos. Yeah. <laughs> no. That's it, true. None, none, David. They prefer the darkness. God, that's a they good prefer joke. The that's such, that's such, that's I a, wrote that. That's a good that's not joke. Bad. That's a good joke. Like, Thank I'm not you. a comedian, but, you know, I watch a lot on Netflix. Um, yeah. And I, I think... <laughs> I think those people that I watch would like that joke. I think the, 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 the masters of the writers and jokes. They prefer the darkness. And I have one, I have one bonus joke I yeah. wrote. Yeah, definitely. Number eight. Um, why is a ska band difficult for cannibals to eat? Why is a ska <laughs> band difficult for cannibals to eat? Because... Um, too many trombones, man. <laughs> Too many trombones. <laughs> they do bones. Too many bones. Trombones. I, I like that you <laughs> railed the joke. <laughs> Too many trombones, man. Boom. That one goes out to Paul Cutler. Yes, yes. Uh -oh. Logan La Babaira. So, Dave, you have a new record coming out with Big D in the kids' table, right? We do. It's... it's uh... What else can one say? But it's just so damn exciting. I can't. I'm so excited. I didn't sound. I didn't sound excited. You guys recorded at the beginning of the um, lockdown, and now it's coming out after the lockdown. At the end of it. Yeah, we right? yeah we started recording it, and we basically did for all the musicians out there: bass, drums, guitar, and um, organ, and then uh, went on tour with Real Big Fish and keep flying and was supposed to come home and finish yeah. it, but then locked down. So we waited a little bit, made sure things were safe. And then when people realized that lockdown was gonna happen even more, a lot of creative people and business people, I guess, I don't know, went out and tried to like cr finish the things they started to create before a bigger lockdown. So we went right. uh, and then went to this like small place in Vermont, with Matt Appleton of Real Big Fish producing and recording and finished it up. And it was fantastic. Matt Appleton from Real Big Fish on production. Yeah. Huh? He moved back from L.A. And our New Englanders uh, not only said welcome home, but let's do a record. That's great, man. And uh, now are you back with Side One Dummy for this release? We are. So everything is just so nice. Yeah. Just back with Side That's One. That's great. Yeah. The, that you have some advantages with working with a label like Side One. I'm sure they can get behind the release a little bit. We just love each other. And I just, we, it's just... It's, you know, like, you know, Eminem says you only get one chance. That's not true. Yep. That's not true. <laughs> and you know what? They did a fantastic job working with you guys on Fluent and Stroll and Strictly Rude. Yeah, those are, I mean, amazing releases. All right. All right. And now you also have a spoken word record out on um, Asbestos Records right now. Yeah. I mean, that, and yeah. you, Go ahead, sir. Tell me about that. Well, I definitely think it's the it's the the craziest thing I put out in in a good sense. Um, it yeah. was it was a couple New England winters back, I think three that we were got hit so hard, and we just had this thing where um, the electricity kept going out, and so I was like, I kept being able to charge my computer's battery, and so I was like, 
I don't know, creative is creative does, so why don't, why don't I just try to do this spoken word and I just did my whole first book, The Gypsy Mile. I just did creative um, musical compositions under me reading the poems and then- Wow. I, yeah, I just did it all, would mix it in my car. The entire book, Gypsy Mile, is on that LP? Yeah, like it's digitally on CD Baby and it's something like seven or eight hours long. Yeah. Wow. But I had so much like music and ideas, like everybody, you know, like music artists out there, like so much stuff that can't quite find itself to a song, but right. but you start to look at these recordings as you're like your kids and your babies and your pets, and you want it, you want them to be able to go do something, and so yeah. I was be able to I was able to purpose a lot of fun stuff. Who um who did the scoring behind it? Was it Blue Banshee? So I recorded my stuff. The stuff that I had in my head was Steve Foot, um, bass player. Uh, oh, for cool. many yes. for, me, for many years. Yeah, Big D Stove Stovetop, and we recorded a lot uh, of just weird stuff. And then uh, Blue Banshee, Liz Leisinger, who's going to be on a new release of mine soon, doing musical composing. She did it. And then my friend Rich Stein, who is actually the first Big D fan ever, and the greatest human being in the world, he he did some uh, master drumming stuff. And then Sean P. Rogan did uh, a lot of great guitar stuff. So a lot. It's just oh wow. It's just creative people doing creative stuff that probably that's amazing. Yeah, and you know what's so cool about a release like that? And that's available now. It is on a special. What's it called? Uh, the Gypsy Mile Reading. But the best part I gotta say about it is it's one of those things where it's like everybody involved is just, you know, very Nietzsche and creative. And, uh, you know, I like that old 90s kind of, we, we were looked at as like the freaky people in high school and we made this thing together. And maybe very, right. very few people may connect with it, but those are the people. You know what I mean? Maybe you were looked at as a freaky person, but I was extremely popular in high school. Oh, I know. Final, final question for you, David. Yeah, as a, a person who mentors young people, you talk about mentoring young people. You're a college professor now, am I right? Yeah, I'm. I'm it, you know, it's, my wife said to me the other day. She goes, "You know, you're a law professor." <laughs> <And I> was, <laughs> oh my goodness! And like, you're a law for Lawrence Tribe over there. I know. <laughs> I have a lot of uh, uh, for the last. Over five years, I, I don't even know. I've, yes, I've been teaching, and you know, you yeah. know, I got to give a huge shout out to the the mighty, mighty Joe Gittleman of the mighty, mighty Bostones, who, you know, helped oh, yeah. me get into Linden uh, College, North, uh, North, uh, North, Northern Vermont University. Taught there for a couple years, like four or five year, four years or so. Right. My commute was two hours and forty five minutes. What? Oh yes. In the snow, no doubt. Yeah, and then and then um, he got my he got my chops up to start work uh, teaching at Bay State College in Boston, and then just did Northeastern this last uh, semester. So so you're all over the place. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's it's awesome. It's awesome. It's like gigging at clubs. You're like, I'll do a, a professor gig over here at this one, and then I go to this other one, I do a professor gig, mm -hmm. then I take a trip up north through the, the snows, and I do another professor gig. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's like, you, you know, I basically want to help people out as much as I humanly p can possibly. I want to tell them every secret, every, they, there's terms like tricks and trades, but there's there's information, and there's tricks and trades, and there's, yeah. I just want them all to skip steps and, I just want to give get right to yeah, it. Yeah, do it. Because if the fortunate people are skipping steps, then I want to give the people who want to learn a couple ninja moves. Ninja moves. All right. With that, on that note, what do you have for us? You gonna do a thing for us? Are you really gonna do a cool thing? Well, I have for a jo I have a dad joke. All right. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Tell us the dad joke. Okay. Well, you know there was this bar in Scotland, and. Um, you know, yeah. one day this young guy came in and he ordered three Guinness and the bartender brought it to his table. Yep. And uh, no one, uh, he noticed after a while that no one joined his table. And uh, he's like, is anybody gonna join your table here? You know, you got three beers. And he's like, uh, yes, uh, no one's gonna be joining. He goes, you, do, oh. you, do you want me to bring the other two beers back? And you know, you can have fresh ones when you're ready. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, I should have told you. No, I, I always get three beers. My, 
And my three brothers and I made a pact that we would always get three beers together and, and, and you know, and, and pantomime and act that we were all here together and right. drink them at once. And he's like, that's very nice, that's very nice. And he's like, yeah. And so he started doing that week after week, and week after week, three beers all at once, drink them. But then one day, uh, he, he ordered two beers. And the bartender, knowing his, client, his customer so well, sullenly walked over and said, you know, I am, I am so sorry about the loss of one of your brothers. <laughs> and the patron said, uh, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, you only bought two beers this 